Well, uh, good afternoon and hope things are well with you. Um, hopefully you're experiencing the comfort and the privilege that comes from being a child of God and just un understanding just all the ways that His provision and His presence mean for our lives and how as the world is just in upheaval and dealing with various issues, how the truth of God truly stabilizes us, allows us to know kind of where we stand in Him as well as within ourselves and uh, before other people as well. And yet what then is promoted in our hearts is so just the, the, the love, the kindness, the mercy, the grace that allows us to uh, reflect to the world truly the love of God that, that He has for everyone. And so as we just continue uh, to work our way through this Psalm, uh, Psalm 24, you know, where we find ourselves is, you know, this answer to the question in terms of who may um, ascend the hill of the Lord, what, what is right, what makes us right before God. And as we've seen, you know, naturally Jesus makes us right, but what God would still affirm. Uh, and we've looked at who has clean hands and pure hearts, who dwells, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. And we kind of delved into this next portion in terms of now the response of God to that. Uh, see, when we put ourselves in a position before God where our hearts are His, where we're having His Spirit work through us, where His Word is in our hearts and, you know, we're, we're just following His plan, you know, just we have to understand that that frees God up to bless us. And so, therefore, this response that comes from God as we offer ourselves to Him is He will receive blessing uh, from the Lord and vindication from God as Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek Him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. And so, just moving on to this concept in terms of just... Um, well, first of all, such is the generation of those who seek him. <laughs> that, that you know, when, th when we think about this blessing, we think about this response from God, this vindication that comes, that again, when we're established in the truth of God, when the authority of the universe is saying, okay, this is how you should be, this is what you should think, this is the truth that guides your life, well, then we're, we're vindicated, we're est established, we're stabilized in that truth. And that's where human opinion really doesn't matter. Well, that's not just for a moment, that's just not for a time frame. It's, it's, it's not just for certain people, it's for all generations, um, so for, for all who seek God, um, you know, and, you know, who, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. You know, the, the, it's certainly, you know, first and foremost, this would be, be the children of Israel, uh, those are the people that God had chosen, who would reveal himself. But we know the further purpose of God was that all human beings would know God, would have an opportunity to seek him. And as we seek God, as we per per pursue Him in terms of our lives, again, that's when this favor that God has in our lives rests rest upon us. And so the question we have for ourselves today, um, just in, in, in initially, is, um, or secondarily maybe, because we've done some initial stuff, but anyways, um, just again, how to what extent are we seeking Him? To what extent... Are we pursuing God? You know, if this promise does come to such as generous those who seek Him, who seek your face, you know, that, that uh, whole idea of face is about relationship. It, it's, it's about presence. It's about pursuing God. It's, it's about making myself available to the things that God would instruct me in. And one of the greatest glories, one of the greatest privilege, the greatest awareness that we would have is that the God of glory, the God of heaven, would want to know us and would allow us to know Him, that, that He would give us points of contact, He would give us information, He would give us revelation, so we would know Him. And what we see throughout history is that God is always manifesting Himself. God is always taking the first step, taking the initiative to reveal Himself to humankind. And so the question that then comes to us is, do we seek Him? Are we making ourselves available? Are we pursuing those things, the resources God gives us to get to know Him? And so therefore, we seek His face in worship. We seek His faith in face in prayer. We seek His face in the Word as far as these points of contact, again, through the Spirit. You know, some of the things that we'll be looking at, you know, on Sunday morning as well in the context of renewing our mind. That that's, that's also the things that we do to seek God. And yet, really, the, the, the tenor of our lives, the, the, the orientation of our lives, 
you know, to, to what extent are we operating those things? I, I know for all of us, I know for myself, boy, you know, am I worshiping God the way that I should? Am, am I praying the way that I should? Am I in the Word the way that I should? Am I really seeking the Spirit in, in the way that I should? And I think we always find ourselves lacking. There's, there's always gaps that can be filled. There's always greater effort that we can make towards um, God. And so just just to realize that uh that that is on us. That that to the extent that God makes Himself available, you know that that's where we need to access Him. We just need we need to seek His face, and and by virtue of that, again, that that's when the favor comes. Now, it is important when it comes to blessing of God. To me, that is God's prerogative. When, how, to the extent of which He blesses us. I think our only job is to be faithful. Our only job is to be obedient. Our only job is to seek God, to internalize His Word, to reflect in our lives, and then how God works, how God blesses, again, He can take care of that. And there's no conditions that I put on God in terms of that, uh, but that is the expectation that the psalm gives. That's the expectation that the Word of God gives in terms of, again, you, you put yourself in a position where God can bless you by Him having your heart, following His Word, seeking His face. Well, then now you free God up to bless. He doesn't, he doesn't have to be in a mode of correction. He doesn't have to be a mode of discipline because, again, we don't need to be corrected because we're doing the things we're supposed to do. Um, then it is really glorious in terms of just the picture that goes on in terms of the rest of the psalm when it says, Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, let the king of glory that the king of glory may come in. You know, just realize this again would be read responsively in terms of one group of people saying one thing, the other group of people saying another thing, just really emphasizing both parts. You know, maybe the first thing to recognize in terms of these the lifting heads and lifting up the doors and so on and so forth is wh wherever God is on the outside of something, we should welcome him in, right? In other words, when we put up doors, we put up barriers to God, you know, you know we need to open those doors. We need to let him in. We, the, 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 the better course of action always for us is to say, okay, God, what more of me do you want? What, what, what more can I do? What more can I be? What, what, what places of my life do you want me to, what do you want to invade? And let me, allow, let, let, I, I want to allow you uh, to do that. Uh, but I think the bigger picture of what is here, the bigger picture of what is here is again when you think about the King of Glory coming through the gates of the temple. You know we're entering the gates, or the people are entering the gates. They're coming into the presence of God. But how much bigger do those gates need to be? You know, the the bigger the person, the greater the glory. Well, then therefore the gates have to be bigger, and that's kind of the picture. That again, if we're welcoming God, if we're coming into the temple where we recognize God's presence is, and we're welcoming God's presence in with us as we are there, well, you know something? Lift up your heads, recognize who's coming, giving them the uh, giving Him the honor, putting the focus and the attention on Him, but then expanding. Because again, when you think about accommodating God's glory, how, how big do those gates need to be? How, how glorious is it? How, how praiseworthy is God in terms of all the attention and focus that we would give him? In terms of just, just what having his presence in our life means. You know, when we think about, again, David t doing this, you know, this, this being the psalm that we would be read on Sundays as they were approaching the temple, and all that was significant about uh, the, the people coming into the presence of God. But, but what made that significant was both the people being there and making themselves available to God, but God being present. And then the glory of the temple was, again, that the Shekinah glory of God was in the Holy of Holies. And even though the high priest would only go in there once a year, there would just be aware, an awareness of the temple of God being the place where God resided. It was amongst his people where God was. And here David is writing this psalm to reinforce that glory, reinforce that awareness of what the Jewish people had about the presence of God amongst them. But the glory of the church age, the glory of the time of Christ, the time of what, what Jesus ushers into the world, is that now we are the temple of the Lord. That now when we think about our gates, we think about our lives, we think about our focus, our attention, again, that king of glory 
resides within us and we are positioned in him. And so now this picture of raising our heads and raising, you know, expanding our vision and expanding our hearts and expanding our availability to God is even greater because, again, we don't have to go to a certain place to engage with the presence of God. The presence of God is in us. And yet, to what extent do we reflect that to the world? To what extent are we being the people of God that reflect that glory in terms of the kind of people we are, the, you know, the, the, the love we express, the truth we express, the compassion that we express, the, 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 the stable mindedness that we have, the peace that we have, the joy we have, the stability that we have, the wisdom that we have, all those things being the reflection of the glory of God coming in. So as much as it is, you know, to read this psalm and to, to think of, okay, lift up the doors, lift up you gates, and again, that the king of glory uh, of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. And, you, you know, you think about, you know, that, that ancient context in terms of, you know, we, we have enemies are against us. We are in battle, defeating enemies. So, you know, referencing the, the power of God in terms of the battles that would be fought in the context of that age, well, maybe that's not so much the battles that we're fighting, but when we think of the battles we do fight, again, who is on our side? It's the Lord Almighty. It's the King of glory that is inside us. That, that's who we have the privilege to be connected with. That, that's the, the one who, who guides and guards and protects and provides for our lives. That's the one that we're oriented to. And so we are people of glory, not, not because of who we are, but what God has provided for us. And, and what, how is that going to change us? How, how, is it gonna make, how is that going to make today different? How, how is that going to renew your mind? How is that going to make you think differently about you, even about other people, where now, you know, or the, the change that we make inside us, again, it st- establishes us before God, it establishes us within ourselves, but then the whole mission and purpose of that is that we become different people for others, that now the world is changed because we are changed. And so go be the change in, you know, in, in your world, in the context of your family, your children, your wife, your husband, your neighbor, and your place of work, because the King of glory resides inside of you. He resides in, in me. And open up those gates, lift it high, fa- focus the attention, to r- raise your head to, to recognize the King of glory. And that, again, that's just a powerful picture that this psalm gives us about just what position we have in him. And so, uh, you know, as we we think about this coming Sunday, you know, again, we will be uh, open again, uh, you know, to the extent that you can. Let us know you're going to be here. Email, phone, um, Facebook message. If you've already been here, we're just kind of assuming we're we're counting you in the number. So it would be helpful to tell us maybe that if you're not going to be here a particular week, it is Communion Sunday this Sunday. And so we are looking to orchestrate something that would be more, uh, that, that, that would be certainly safe in terms of how we're conducting ourselves. And so we are, what we are picturing for, first of all, maybe for those at home, you know, Get your elements together. Again, we will do communion in maybe more official ways because there will be people here at the building. And the way we imagine distributing the elements is, you know, certain certain individuals who are at different places within the building that, that have the elements, you know, it's going to feel a little bit more like your Catholic upbringing where you will go and get your communion and then come back to your seat uh, because, you know, to avoid passing plates and so on and so forth. Uh, so so ju- just be prepared for that that we will have have people walking up to the place where people who have clean hands and hopefully pure hearts <laughs> will be passing out uh, the communion, communion elements. And then we'll enjoy that time of just remembering Jesus and the sacrifice that he has made that really makes all of this possible. Amen. God bless.